City of Stevens Point Historic Preservation Design Review Commission Meeting, recorded September 28, 2022. All right, so I got 3.30, so in the absence of a chair, I will call the September 28th, 2022 meeting of the Historic Preservation Design Review Commission to order. And we'll start with a roll call. Uh, Siebert is excused. Uh, Monk is excused. Uh, Christensen? Here. McFarland? Present. Uh, Scripps is excused. Malepski? I don't see online. And then excused. And then Hornig? I'm here. <clears throat> All right. By the tightest of margins, we got a quorum. All right, item number two is the selection of a temporary chairperson for the September 28th, 2022 meeting of the Historic Preservation Design Review Commission. So, be happy to take any uh, nominations. I'll nominate Mr. Christensen. I'll second that. <laughs> all right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, Chair Christensen, this is your meeting. All right, thank you. Um, pretty short agenda this afternoon. Our first. Um, item after since we already have our temporary chairperson um, will be to take a look at the report of the August 10th meeting. You have those in your, you have those minutes in your packet. Does anyone have any concerns, any questions? Otherwise, a motion to approve would be in order. A motion to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Any Otherwise, we'll just go ahead and take the uh, take the vote. All in favor of uh, approving the minutes as presented in the packet, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed would be no. Passes unanimously. That takes us to our next item on the agenda. We have a request from uh, Dale Warner to, for a design review to install a new window on the building located at 2101 Clark Street. Um, I can give a quick. If you would give us a quick uh, overview of that, that'd be appreciated. Yeah, so as uh, the chair mentioned, the subject property 2101 Clark Street falls within the Clark Street Historic District, uh, southeast corner of Reserve Street and Clark Street, directly uh, adjacent to Emerson Park. Uh, so getting a little more into detail as to the request itself. So this request entails adding a new uh, window on the second floor of the house. Uh, this is part of a much larger project that if you've driven past, you may have seen already uh, uh, occurring, new siding, um, some facial improvements. Um, so the arrow here shows the proposed location and then the rendering that was provided by the applicant as well, providing more of a conceptual view, and then the uh, specific window in question that the applicant is requesting. Uh, so why does this require approval? So um, specifically in the major works, um, so this would be subsection in, uh, O, it calls for the installation of new windows and doors as a major work requiring this approval. Um, and specifically in terms of the requirements, a lot of the requirements are that you see in the design guidelines don't necessarily relate or does, does not necessarily apply to this request. Uh, the big one, at least that I took a look at with respect to the request, is item number 11, the introduction of new windows and door openings into the uh, structure is not recommended. However, if permitted, the new opening should be proportionally the same in terms of uh, sash, glass, sills, etc. And my perspective, uh, really, it's a two-part question. First, is it appropriate to have a new window? Uh, my vantage point is if this was a request where it would be a new window is proposed off the north-facing wall or the west-facing wall directly abutting uh, Clark Street, Reserve Street, uh, respectively, that would be no way, no way that I would accept that uh, just because I don't believe it aligns with the commission's guidelines. Here, since it's not directly facing the street, in my opinion, there's wiggle room, there's enough there where provided it meets the second criteria that I'll mention in a little bit, it can be approved. And the second criteria being, 
is it proportionally the same to the other windows that are, are located on the building? And this is really a discussion where um, I think would be fruitful to have in terms of uh, really the number of uh, window panes. Um, you mentioned, I mentioned in the report that, uh, you know, under a literal interpretation of the guidelines, um, the amount of window panes that are located on the, win on the building currently, uh, that should match any new windows that are proposed. Um, so just looking at the windows here that currently exist on the building, roughly two to three window panes exist. This is providing five. However, you know, one could make the argument as well that this new window is better proportional in terms of size, in terms of scale with the other windows. So you know, I leave it up to uh, this commission to gather your feedback and uh, before I kick it back to the commission, I'll actually invite the applicant as well if you wanted to step up to the podium and sure. provide a little background, the purpose of the project. Well, thanks for the intro, Adam. Um, we've had a lot of projects on this house. I'm about a 20-year owner of this property, and we've kind of renovated it through the years in a few different phases. Uh, the phase going on right now is a continuation of a phase that happened probably two years ago where half the house had complete window replacements with Pella windows with grid patterns. Now we're redoing all the upstairs windows to match the grid patterns so the routes of the house is more consistent and has continuity. Um, this transom window was developed on that bedroom up there because it's a north facing room and it's kind of an not an awkward room but it doesn't get any light was the whole thought behind the transom window to be up so it could be up above like a headboard in that room just to get some natural light because that area of the house is very dark um, and being that it is such a big flat wall it faces our backyard um, my rental next door is pretty much the only house that I can see it at this point with maybe a couple neighbors across the street um, so we thought it would be a, a nice looking accent to the house as well. So that's kind of the reason for it is more for light than anything into a dark area of the house. Um, so that was really the design idea behind it. Um, and it does kind of match some other windows that we have going into the property. The panes are a few bit more. There's five on this one. We have some other ones that are threes and fours. Um, the architect that drew this up thought it would fit, you know, the feel of the house with the panes that were selected. So that's kind of how we ended up where we were. Um, so that's really, in a nutshell, uh, what we're trying to accomplish here. So I don't know if anybody has questions for me directly. If not, I'll turn back to you. Either, either the other commissioners have questions at this time? <clears throat> One thing I would know just uh, regarding the window itself, you see in the historic photos that I included, this was something that I thought was quite interesting that um, the you can see the old picture, the old windows, it was really just one one sheet of glass. There was no dividing these larger windows into individual panes. So, I mean, in the context of um, does this window directly relate to historic windows in terms of the pane configuration? Not necessarily. However, as the applicant met uh, mentioned, it better complements the other uh, windows that currently exist. I think the other important factors is the fact that it's it's not on a principal elevation, yeah. um, and so I, I think actually when you take a look at the the view on page three of our packet, it almost is begging for a window there. It's it's a big blank spot, and it's kind of the only based on that facade that has that large of an expanse. Um, I do think that the shape of the entire bank is is very similar to the other uh, windows, and I, I do think that it complements those existing windows quite well. So um, I, I guess I think they've done a, a pretty nice job of, of trying to stay true to the, the rest of the, the facade and the fact that it's not a principal elevation. I think adding a window, mm -hmm. tip, if it's a principal elevation, it, it's not recommended it's in certain situations, still could be permitted. In this yeah. situation, I think it, it will actually enhance and be uh, very complementary to what already exists, so. And, and Adam, as follow-up to your comment about the blank sheets of glass, I don't know when those photos were, but when we bought the house 20-some years ago, 
there was storm windows that you could take on and put on the house. They were heavy sheeted glass windows that were storm in nature, and those had the grid patterns like we have on our house now with okay. the bar and the slats. Um, we never used them. They were in disrepair, but those were on the house when we bought it. So there was a grid pattern at some point in time. Yeah, these old pictures were taken in the mid 1970s. Yeah, so maybe they just maybe the storm windows weren't on at that time. Could be. Then, so could be. Yeah. Okay, a, a motion to approve would be in order. I would move to approve with staff recommendations number two and three. Perfect. Okay. Adam, would you like to speak to the staff recommendations that you put forth? Yeah, so the, uh, the first one was really kind of what we talked about. Um, as a commission, do you feel the window that's proposed, having the five window panes is more appropriate, or is it appropriate to have kind of that two to three range? But uh, and that's kind of a question that, you know, we've talked about, but if, you know, commission is comfortable with the window as proposed, you know, I would have no hesitations as well. And the other uh, conditions two and three are more just standard for any yeah. window project. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. The, the smaller window directly below the proposed location looks like three panes, but that size looks very similar, mm -hmm. at least um, to the passer buyer. It's not going to look out of place by having that five pane window there. I think that complements it pretty well. And you take a look at the bank of windows just to the side of it, I think actually having the five will be more similar to, to that bank extending that entire width. So I guess I'm, second, I'm very comfortable. We, yeah. we would need a second. I would second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the permit um, with the staff uh, recommendations of, of number two and number three to be implemented. Um, for, for staff recommendations. Those in favor of that motion will signify by saying aye. 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 And all opposed, would the sign of be no? Passes unanimously. Perfect. And I'll uh, reach out to you tomorrow, Dale, as okay. far as just sending you a sure. design review certificate. Okay. Uh, next well, I appreciate that. Awesome. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, you all for your time and consideration. You bet. Okay. Thanks. Nice job, by the way. Well, yeah. Looks great. Well, it yeah. looks very nice. Fun project. It's taking all of our extra pocket change. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not cheap, I know. Yeah. Okay. And then our final item uh, is staff updates. So yeah. our zoning minister can share his wisdom. Share my wisdom. All right, so the last time that we met, as you may recall, we discussed three different ordinance amendments, the uh, approval process for accessory structures, approval process for renewing a, an expired design review certificate, and tweaks to our demolition guidelines. Uh, those were approved by the Common Council a little over a week ago, and I've talked with most of you uh, individually over the course of the last few months now, but um, essentially the conversations that I've had, they've sparked a desire to have a more comprehensive look at our guidelines, more to see you know, what works well, are there still gaps in our guidelines, are there revisions in order, and really have a holistic approach, more so from the vantage point of these design guidelines were adopted in 2014, and there really has not been a comprehensive evaluation of this since. Um, the only amendments that took place were what was approved last week and uh, painting guideline amendments, I think, in 2016, 2018. Um, so what I'm asking for you all is next couple of weeks, uh, take a look, you know, skim through it. Um, Jot down some areas where you think needs improvement, uh, areas that you think works well. And this, you know, what I would recommend is not only looking at these design guidelines, but also just anecdotal evidence going out in the field. You know, are there, are there requirements that 
you think should be in place that are not already addressed? Are there requirements in here that you think are too uh, burdensome or don't necessarily need to be a requirement? Um, you know, keep jog of that, keep note of that. And what I plan on doing is uh, in the winter months, really having the discussion, talking about where are we at right now? Uh, where do we want to be in terms of this commission's guidelines, this commission's requirements, and set forth the path to see what amendments, if any, uh, this commission uh, this commission supports. So, uh, and if you have any questions or you know any commissioners who are going to be listening after the fact, you know, shoot me a call, shoot me an email. Happy to have a conversation with you. But it's more just an update as to what I envision happening. Uh, later this fall, this winter, and kind of giving you a heads up. And I think, too, this is kind of in keeping with what the, the council has been trying to do with ordinances and everything. We're trying to take a, a proactive look at things and not just a reactive response when there's concerns raised. So I think this, this will serve the community well to take a look and see if there are things that we can say, you know, I think we do well, but I think you can always do better. And so taking a, a look at things and evaluating it, I think is always a positive thing. So I like the idea. Awesome. And one last note, uh, that's not directly mentioned in the, as far as a staff update, but you all must uh, should have received an email a couple days ago. Uh, Jordan, I know you haven't, but as far as the uh, local history and historic preservation conference will be happening in about two weeks from now. Um, if you're interested in going or want to view recordings of the conference after the fact, let me know. Um, I can send you the information and more so I would want to know on, on my end just to make sure that we don't have a, essentially a quorum of commissioners that's going to be at the conference. Just since I know I'll be there. Uh, all the person Christensen will be there. So, yeah, if you have questions or are interested, give me a shout. And How many people would you like to be present? Uh, as long as we don't have, um, well, we can have a quorum. It's just we would have to post it. Exactly. So, and that's kind of the purpose. I would need to know I sooner rather than later. And there is a benefit of commissioners attending from the vantage point of, um, there is an annual grant that the uh, state provides to certify local governments, Stevens Point being one of them, where essentially the more commissioners who shows up, that improves our odds and we're more likely to sure. be yeah. a recipient. So, <laughs> so, uh, that's in Wausau, correct? Uh, Coleman Water, right? Rothschild. 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 Okay. I knew, okay. okay. I think yeah, I did yeah it is yep. Yep. Thursday the... 13th, yes. So yeah, if you're interested, uh, let me know. And if there's a quorum, we'll just have to make note of that. So otherwise, that is it. OK, then at that point, our uh, agenda is exhausted. And we will stand adjourned at 3.48. There we go. All right. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website stevenspoint.com slash videos.